right, I think we might as well get started. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Um, we we had a bit of a issue with the Zoom time actually. This, this was my fault. It's normally scheduled for an hour earlier, um, but this this time it was an hour later, and obviously Zoom with the calendar meant that everybody turned up at the time it was scheduled. It was just the team turned up an hour earlier, going, "Huh, what's happening?" So that was my bad. But we will be back in two weeks for, at the normal time, which will be an hour earlier. Um, so yeah, apologies for that if anyone got confused. But yes, we are here for another ACF Chat Fridays, which I'd see some names that perhaps haven't been before. We did send an email out um, in the week, so perhaps we've got some new people, which is great to see you. But for anyone who doesn't know, it is our uh, office hours that we do with the ACF team. We've got some of the, the engineers uh, and some of the wider team here today. We've got uh, Anthony, we've got Matt, and we've got Mike from the content team. We are just here every two weeks. We want to take your questions. We want to hear about what how you're using ACF. We want to hear about issues. We want to just talk about ACF. Um, and sometimes we do have topics. We might talk about ACF blocks, for example. We might talk about using um, work, uh, ACF with a page builder or other things. We've got two weeks time. We've actually got a, uh, a special guest in Jason Barl, who is the uh, founder of WP GraphQL, which is a kind of using uh, GraphQL instead of the REST API to do cool things with WordPress, including headless WordPress. Uh, and it works really nicely with ACF. So he'll come and talk to us about that. Um, but this week, this session, we've got just open as usual. Uh, Q&A will be running in Zoom. So if you wanna drop questions in the Q&A, um, or if you don't have the Q&A feature because you might be running an old version of Zoom, you could just throw it in the chat and the team will help, uh, help to answer. We are recording the session and it goes on our YouTube channel. We've got a WP Engine Builders YouTube and we do do a post on the uh, Advanced Custom Fields website as well. Let me just throw that out, uh, the link. So we've got our dedicated Chat Fridays page where we list uh, all the previous sessions with videos and notes about the session. So if you ever do miss them, you can kind of catch up that way. Uh, what else have we got to say? Just as an intro. Yeah, sorry, I'm Ian Paulson. I'm the product manager and I introduced the team. Um, we have, well, the team have been working hard over the last couple of weeks. We're working on ACF 6.3 uh, and we're also working on a couple of kind of point releases that will happen before ACF 6.3 will be uh, launched. So that, and that will be a couple of couple of fixes or a couple of releases of fixes and general improvements, things that have been hanging around for a while. So yeah, the, the team have been heads down, nothing major to report, no news. Um, but yeah, we are, we can get started. Yeah. So as, as I said, Q and A is there. If you, I mean, we've got, how many people? 17 people in the chat. Raise your hand, unmute, feel free to start a conversation um, and we can go from there. Nice to see where people are coming from. Mainly the US, which is cool. It's pretty US friendly time right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it might actually help the fact that we've shifted it an hour by accident because it's it's not as early for folks in the US. Oh, Mike, yeah, you're in Canada. I knew that, Mike. Um, just just to fill the silence a little bit. Last time we spoke, uh, Eagle, you spoke quite a bit about uh, Generate Press and other kind of page builders, even though Generate Press isn't. Um, I went away and did some homework. I actually spoke to the founder, Tom, of Generate Press, uh, just about how ACF works with it and just just to sort of get to know him a little bit more. I think we're going to do maybe a post on the uh, Advanced Custom Fields blog. And we are hopefully going to have him and some of his team on in a future session to talk about Generate Press, to talk about how to build sites with Generate Press and ACF. Um, which will hopefully help some people that may already be building with Generate Press or maybe thinking about it. Um, so yeah, we 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 listened and we're we trying to do some uh, cross promotional stuff. That would be awesome. And and actually, I did reach out to the Bricks guys as well, um, and just having a conversation with them in the background on email. So we'll, we'll see what comes of that as well. But yeah, it's good to it's good to hear sort of 
more people saying, oh, well, I use this tool, I use this page builder, or I use this starter theme. And, you know, as we said last time, Bricks is definitely increasing uh, its market share. So it'll be interesting to see what we can do with them as well. chat and Slack. Oh, hey, Sean. Yeah, good to see you. Lily transform. Uh, I think your audio is breaking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any cool bit of that. That's all right. It's better, better. Much better. Give it, give it a shot. All right. Um, I've been using the yeah, ACF eight to 10 years now. Um... No, lost you again. It's like as soon as you start talking, it gets like the first few words and then goes silent. It's like almost it sounds like noise canceling even. Oh, it's gone. You said in chat that it reconnect. Nice. Uh, Evan, did you have your hand up? Do you want to jump in or, or should we wait? Sure. Yeah, I just had my hand up. Um, I, I listened in a few weeks ago and it, the discussion was primarily based on, um, using page builders and things like that. But my use case, I think you even, you commented on it from the, um, the poll that you put out. There were so many people that use just ACF blocks and core blocks and full site editing. So that's, that's pretty much my approach. I create a custom theme and um, I use underscores as a starting point for my theme. And basically from there, everything is ACF blocks or WordPress core blocks. So I love, I've been doing that for like two years. It's awesome. Um, pretty much exclusively have, have switched over to doing building uh, sites that way. And probably the thing that um, I struggle with the most with ACF blocks is just making the experience as close as possible to core blocks for the customer. So um, one feature request, I guess, that I think could be really useful for core blocks is the ability to add like a secondary styling menu within core blocks. So um, right now, WordPress core blocks are limited to just, just the one style pane. But oftentimes, you know, on the back end, you have your a primary style, and then you apply multiple different sub styles with different classes. Um, but if there was a possibility to add a secondary UI element in the sidebar, the block options, for a second style that basically just adds a class to the core block as an extension of that core block. Um, that seems like a good use case for ACF. And I've seen I've seen the discussion um, about how ACF is out of scope for core blocks adding fields. To, and I really I don't really see how you could add you know text input field to a core block that doesn't really make sense because you can't access the template files or anything. But at least an option like a toggle or even a select drop down that's in the same style as the WordPress core, that seems like a really good application. Um, and there's not really an easy way that I've seen to do that with a function There's the to add a secondary it, style. Because I was just looking up a doc on uh, that Tenup wrote about uh, extending the core blocks, because there is the register block extension component that Tenup made that allows you to, um, I guess, extend it if you if you need to extend a core one. Um, and then inside of that, I think you could call ACF data or something like that. Um, and, and isn't core adding something where you can connect existing meta uh, data and then use it in. Yeah, I think the, the final pattern for that's still being worked out because I think there were like some suggestions to do these like almost short codes. And I think a lot of people were like, wait, that's a short code. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I need to look into that. Um, but I, I know that there, what what I think is, it, it, there are going to be better ways to extend the core blocks in the future. And I think that's the thing. It's like rather than than I guess make a design pattern right now, I think it would be really good to see that there is a way to do it rather than kind of hacking away at it. Um, at least in core. But that's not to say that we wouldn't want to like make the experience of of ACF blocks be more like the core blocks and use as many components as we can in the future. That's something that, that we're we're still discussing internally and like kind of figuring out a, a plan on how how do you make that experience not feel different, right? Um, I think that's that's the ultimate goal because then if you can make your own paragraph block that feels exactly like the other core paragraph block but does all of the things you want to do, then then that's kind of that seems to be the, the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's oftentimes what I end up doing is I basically create an identical block, custom block for something that already exists in core just because I need to have two separate styling levels to to extend it. So it seems and, and there's a lot of benefits to to using the core block, just the, the amount of settings that it, that come predefined. Um it's a lot of work to recreate something that already exists just so you can add one level of styling elements to it. So and just to just to confirm, you when you're saying about adding styling elements, you're you're talking about how it renders on the front end of the site, like adding different HTML attributes or different div wrappers or you're you're, you're trying no, not to not necessarily so so if you select a block, just a core block. Uh, in the block editor, then the sidebar you have the ability to choose a style, and you can create your custom your own custom styles. And I typically register a ton of different custom styles in there. But sometimes you have multiple levels of styles based on your design, and you would have to have basically a you'd have to have a hundred <laughs> custom styles for every possible combination because it only adds one class. But if you if you need to add two classes to a core block, then you can you only have the option of adding it in the styles menu. But that's not very user friendly for an editor that's not a, not a developer to go and add a class, a secondary class. Yeah. And 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 that is possible with ACF blocks. It's just not as connected with the the UI as as native blocks. Yeah. So if I when I create a custom block. An ACF block, I might have an entire pane of select drop downs and all kinds of selectors for different styling options. Um, but sometimes you just need a, you know, you have an image. I did one project where I had the the design called for images that had all kinds of different masks, mask shapes, but then it also had a background like object behind the image that were different shapes. So I could either create a dozen different styles that had every possible combination. So you could select that one style from the menu. Um, if there was a second style, then you could choose shape and then you could choose background. But I ended up having to create an image block in ACF blocks so that I can have multiple levels of styles just for that very simple use case. So, yeah, I thought that was a, that. I understand the argument against making ACF trying to add fields and things to a core block. It doesn't, I don't see how that works in a practical sense, but adding a secondary level of styling to a block seems to make a lot of sense. Yeah, I wonder if that's uh, something that the core team are looking into because um, that feels like it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like a no-brainer that, that it should exist already. The, the, yeah. the 10 up the ten up they have like a, a a JavaScript package called block components and they have a register block extensions function in there and that gives you the ability to add styles on top of core blocks. Like it, I think they're they're uh, they have a function called generate class name and it'll like add that class to the to the block. Um, I can post that. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty good guide. Uh, this, the, but this is like you're kind of doing your own custom blocks at this point, and 
kind of injecting because like then with their example you can actually get inside the inspector controls and add a panel body and add a toggle and class name and all that mm -hmm. so that might be one way yeah, I, to accomplish it today but i i wouldn't say that that's like the the hardened future-proof way maybe because <laughs> who mm -hmm. knows what the future holds for extending blocks and core yeah it's also a lot of a lot of code to do something very simple <laughs> that you have to do on every site that you build i have to do something similar so it's just repeatable something repeatable that you have to do over and over again yeah it's, it's a lot of gutenberg would be said like that i think um and just to pick up something you said when you started um, talking around, you, you, you listened to maybe a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about page builders. Um, I think we had one session not that long ago where we just concentrated on blocks and we talked about, you know, what was coming up in 6.3, which is hopefully by the end of the year, and it will be, you know, a very blocks focused release. And I think it's probably just worth clarifying for people who are new to the call or haven't heard us talk about this much before, but, you know, we are very aware that ACF is used by, different types of WordPress developers, different types of WordPress builders, people who use blocks like yourself, Evan, to, to create um, sites, people who use page builders, Elementor, Bricks, you know, lots of different um, page builders, people who build very classic WordPress sites with ACF, custom fields, with maybe flexible content field to to kind of give your content editors that, that control, but not as much control as the block editor or a page builder. Um, so we... We recognize the many ways to WordPress, which is a phrase that we definitely keep saying a lot. And ACF is there to sort of support everything. We are trying to be still agnostic in the sense of not saying one's better than the other because the best tool is the one that you know as a developer and ACF is just there for everybody. So yeah, we, when we talk about blocks on a session or we do like a blocks release, it, it doesn't necessarily mean we are going 100% blocks and we're leaving everything else behind. And similarly, when we talk about page builders, we're not focusing only on that. It's trying to get the balance right um, and trying to push push the, the plugin forward, but also keep up with core, keep up with WordPress, keep up with the block editor, making sure that ACF blocks is um, is there and, and, and making it easy for people to continue to build with WordPress as WordPress changes with the block editor and the full site editor, um, but still with... Um, support for people who who are using other ways to build with WordPress. So yeah, I just if I keep saying that and people just get sick of it, tell me. But I think it's you know I don't want people to come to these sessions and think oh god they're only talking about blocks. What about the way I build with ACF or you know equally with page builders? We're we're trying to do we're we're trying to sort of cater for everything as much as possible as much as that's humanly possible, obviously. And the page builders too, like it's kind of their decision how what direction the, the they go, you know, like so us being opinionated doesn't really make sense. It's just we have to service all of them because look at like a lot of the page builders are looking at how they can become more block based. So yeah. that makes more sense because they focus on on more of the design of your website. So they're they're uh, they're probably best suited to determine where you should go next as far as how you're building sites and uh, the design side. Yeah, and as long as we fit in there, that's that's our goal, you know. Yeah, because ACF at the end of the day is is about adding more data, more structured data to your WordPress sites, and that doesn't matter how you build them. So Elementor has nice integrations with ACF because they recognise people want to create custom post types, create custom fields, and display that in the page builder. You know, so we're almost at a level a level below the page builder, below the block editor, but on top of WordPress where you know, you're going to create new post types, you're going to create new taxonomies, you're going to create fields, you're going to create settings pages. And and then with that data, it depends how you want to surface it. Um, so yeah, just want to reiterate that again. Uh, Sean, you're back. Do you want to test your mic again? Uh, we'll see if this is any better. I turned lower the noise cancelling, see if that That's helps. That's perfect. Yeah, cool. you're already you're on it. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, so yeah, this is my first time at the chat. Um, as I said, Ian and I have me out with some awesome stuff, but uh, it's uh, ACF is absolutely crucial to everything that I do for pretty much my whole WordPress journey here for a long time. So appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Um, recently, I got into ACF Extended, and they offer a lot. Oh, no. 
know, lost you. It's gone fuzzy. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like the data stream is is like picking up every millisecond, every few milliseconds. It's really strange. Yeah. But... And then it fades to nothing. That is so strange. I've never seen that behavior. F feel free to drop it if i mean it's obviously typing it rather than speaking it but if you want to drop it in the q a we can answer it uh or the chat but yeah modern technology honestly it's... i've had a similar so it's like it's almost like um in a music program when like the audio latency starts like becoming more than what it's giving and then it just starts starting sounding crackled it's it's like that yeah and, and there's always a comp like a problem with especially noise cancelling if you've got no, not got headphones in and it's hearing it and then it's cancelling it oh, because that's it's hearing yeah, your own voice thing, and it's right? like just yeah oh, okay cool well that'll work <laughs> nice Just while Sean's typing, Evan, did that answer your question before? Hopefully we, we covered that and didn't just skip on from it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that answer. Nice. Yeah, TLDR is it's very top of mind for us. <laughs> yeah, especially making <laughs> making the, the UI of ACF blocks and, and the experience of ACF blocks as native as possible. Um, right. You know, we're, we're even thinking, like, how do we? Because if, if you've you got an ACF block, and you've got the sidebar to edit the fields, but you've obviously got the preview mode, which shows it displayed in the block editor, but you've got the edit mode that is like an edit form. We're kind of thinking, how do we improve that? Because that's not even a pattern in Gutenberg to have like an edit form. It's all, you know, you, you inline the edit. Um, so we are, yeah, constantly trying to think how we can make it better and how we can improve the UX to be as native as core. Yeah, the side the sidebar, it's a little jarring when you get into ACF fields because they don't look the same. Yeah. And they're kind of it'd be nice to be able to rearrange them. So if you did have a custom select drop down or something that you could put it directly under style so that everything's connected instead of being kind of linked together. Yes. Yeah, that that should work with conditional logic, because if you're hiding stuff until you've got like a if you've got a select field and then it shows uh other settings if you've selected a value from that select field that then it should be ordering it correctly but i would need to double check that right rob you have asked a question but let we'll just skip to sean's and then come back to you if that's okay rob um sean says he's a classic wordpress and acf guy struggle with the block editor i haven't made the transition uh, all the sites I do are highly customized from the ground up using custom designs. Do we have any examples of completely custom themes that utilize Gutenberg very well? I've seen a couple of examples. They're very extremely clunky, but to be present far and seem to present far more challenges for both developers and clients. Yeah. I, I don't know. We have, I mean, we've, we've done some case studies on the, on the ACF blog. We've, we've done some case studies around using classic acf and the flexible content field and we have done some block based uh case studies around you know people using blocks successfully and obviously you know for example evan is as well but uh, do you mean uh, a custom theme that someone's created or or one that you would use as a starter theme it's, yeah yeah so a, a good example yeah um i mean i i personally like the frost theme like i feel like that one is pretty well done um if it's like uh just spin it up from the you know get to a block template that has your header and area to work in some good styling and controls that's kind of what i look for when i'm starting a new block based theme um, yeah and, and that's not a it's not it's not acf blocks as such it's just Gutenberg site editor native blocks. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it's it's a, it's a tricky one, Sean. I think because when you start building sites, like if we take ACF out of the question and we just talk about building WordPress sites with uh, the block editor and maybe the site editor as well, 
you've got people who are just using the native blocks to create sites, but they're very much making the person who is in the editor, the designer, and the person that you have to kind of pull everything together in using the native blocks, maybe use columns or groups and or you know loads of different images and, and working out how to design these blocks. And that's not, traditionally, that's not what the content editor wants to do. Um, and you do have the ability to lock templates down with blocks in certain places and only allow content editors to add, you know, X amount of these certain blocks. But it's still quite hard, I think, to to go, um, yeah, to go from a sort of a classic way of building to a block, um, a block way of building, and and yeah, it, as I say, I do think to myself like, who are the clients that are being delivered a a block um a block site and are, are they given something that's pre-built where they feel like they can't touch it too much because it will break it or it's yeah yeah i think that's the, the thing that clients probably just want a, the right level of control which is small rather than uh you know a, a full page builder or a full a full site editor but yeah, if anyone else has seen any good themes or uh, Evan, you saying underscores creates a, a developer starter theme. But then I presume, Evan, you're you're building custom blocks. You're not just relying on the native blocks to design the page. You're building custom blocks that are less granular. Like you may, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it just feels like the more people who I speak to about blocks, they're building sections rather than like individual things that you have to piece together with blocks. It's like, let's just create an ACF block, which is the hero section. And then we've got a field that will be the title, a field that will be the description and a field that will be the image selection. And that's where the, the client is making their content edits. And it's kind of easy because they know where to edit rather than having to drag in an image to here and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the first one, the first site I did with the block editor exclusively was um almost everything was an acf custom block and then everything was fields and i had the client all they could do is enter the title the paragraph and if there was an image i had an image acf image field and um i've since gotten a little bit more sophisticated with creating layouts that have nested core blocks but nested acf blocks so even creating ACF blocks that have children ACF blocks for to build the layouts instead of just trying to do um, an entire section that relies entirely on ACF. Yeah. Yeah. But which One I, of the I, limitations I think is um, the core blocks from a layout perspective are just so, they're so limited, even like the column, you want to build columns. Well, if you try to make them, use grid or flex there's so many problems with that from a, from a responsiveness standpoint that i pretty much have to build entire section just for the layout so that the i can build flex and grid columns the way that i want it for the page but i still want to be able to utilize the core blocks within those layouts and then you know enters intersperse the acf sub blocks and things like that yeah and I think that's probably is the the way we would recommend it. And I know we've got another engineer, Liam, who's sort of heavily into the blocks. I think when people talk about building building blocks and block sections with ACF, they've done the same thing as you, where they've kind of gone all out to be one ACF block, and then they've realised I need a bit more control, or I need a, the client to have a native block experience as well as having this this area which is a bit more defined. Um, so it's things like inner blocks and using the, the native blocks is, is probably the right way to do it. But I think to me, this just all comes down to like what is right for your client or, or the person who's going to be editing this website. Um, Cause I, I see people on, you know, there's people who are quite, uh, I guess this, they're, they're building with the the block editor there. They're not maybe building for clients. I'm just trying to find, there's a guy called Jamie Marsden who does YouTube videos. And like, it's great to watch because he's building like 
recreating the Tom Cruise website with the block editor or recreating the TechCrunch website with the block editor and showing how it can be really done in 30 minutes, which is kind of all well and good. But again, who is going to be using that as the editor to then make changes going forward? It's not like I think it just comes down to use the tool for the site build that's right for the client for right for that situation um and not every but not everything should be let's just go to the block editor because that's what wordpress is doing because i i think the the, the end user or the the kind of the segment that wordpress is going for with the block editor isn't agencies isn't like enterprise sites it isn't sort of big sites that you don't want a page builder for and effectively that's what the block editor is as well so it's yeah it's i don't know it's a tricky one and again with acf we try and just help everyone um but i, I guess sean the, the answer my personal feeling is like if you're doing it in a in a way that works for you and your clients right now and if it isn't broke you don't necessarily need to you know you, you've had an experience with the block editor that's perhaps not you know it's not a good experience and it's not making you switch to it so do you need to uh let's rob you asked uh, i'm using the understrap theme to develop a site and uh, the reusable plugin for my acf blocks I'll have to quickly I'll have to look into the reusable plugin. Is there a way to get the blocks to recognize bootstrap and CSS variables in the page editor? So is this when editing in the block editor? Um the blocks aren't uh, I wonder if bootstrap is even loaded in the block editor. Right. So uh I think it's the it's oh, the no. reusable plugin that um uh Damon Cook developed. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have that and it's, it's working great. So I'm, I've been using uh, ACF for about 18 years. So I was so used to like the using the uh, flexible content, but ACF blocks are like, it's a lot neater. So like when I'm going in, I'll get clients that, you know, I'll create the block, but it looks good on the front end. But when they're editing the page, you know, like um, the rows are not showing up. Um, even like the CSS variables inside of the under uh, strap theme, you know, I can't pull those colors in. Is, is there like a good way to pull all of that into the plugin? I wonder if that's a limitation of the, it, of the under strap theme. It's not yeah. loading. Well, with your block, you could set the editor styles, right? Underscore. And then maybe the editor styles, you could then import all of your. Okay your bootstrap yeah. so part of block.json is editor styles and then you can point mm -hmm. that to a css file and okay. those are the those are the styles that are applied to your block in the editor view all right so then yeah. i think that should solve it so then you include all the things you're missing currently and that should be available in the editor state okay because i didn't want to use i didn't want to load like bootstrap twice so you know with the uh, theme and the plugin so i'm just trying to find like a good workaround for that maybe that'll do it Liam, maybe maybe you know better than me on that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm pondering because that that feels like the answer, right? Technically, you're supposed to. Hi, everyone. By the way, sorry, I'm late. Uh, the um, so you de yeah, you definitely have to, or it definitely is supported to say editor styles, but it shouldn't necessarily have that much of an impact because unless you're using the new iframe where everything is actually self-contained you get other issues with ACF blocks there. So you're almost certainly not using that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I, I go down that approach first. I'd also look at to try and see what classes the, the styles that are, are, are being applied to and see if there's something specific that is excluding it. Cause you might find that it is just something about a wrapper that WordPress is putting on that's overriding the styles. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you inspect in the block editor view and see if your styles are actually there, but they're all crossed out because they're they're being overridden by the WordPress default. The mm -hmm. WP block class is normally the one that, that causes problems. Right. Yeah. And I, that's what I think it is. So sometimes the buttons will show up. Sometimes there's, you know, like little things that show up. But if it's like, a you know, I have a row and I have columns in that row, 
looks good on the front end, but then you go into the editor and it just like everything is just kind of all discombobulated. So there's there's some magic that happens, and I don't quite understand it. I need to dig more into it. But if you're if you have a style in any of your style sheets that has WP dash block in it, then somehow that WordPress detects that and makes that available inside your block regardless. Um, that still doesn't work with the iframe, but going backwards, you might find that if you just did, you know, on, on your core kind of style that you have in your, in your style sheet, add a, you know, comma dot WP block mm -hmm. and the same, you know, selector, then that might be enough to make WordPress think, oh, hang on, this is required for this block to work. So I will make sure this gets sent in as well. Okay. But yeah, ping us on the, on Twitter or, or something I'm interested to follow up on this or support email oh. however you oh. want to get in touch but yeah we'll uh we'll dig a bit deeper yep yep thanks especially if you can get us the staging version where we can actually dig into it okay i definitely can yep awesome nice good timing liam Uh, anybody, well, uh, I guess there's an open question. Is anybody else similar to Rob and Evan where they've, and, and perhaps a little bit ahead of where Sean is, where they've gone from classic and they've made the jump to blocks, the block editor with ACF blocks and, and it's working out. Is it, is there any other experience there that we can, we can help, um, maybe help going back to Sean's original question. Or is anyone very anti-blocks and they're going to continue their way? Um, Evan, the underscores dot me theme. Is that just a general st developer starter theme, or does it actually have like block focus things now? Now the block editor is a bit more around. It's basically like a blank shell. It it creates all the the template files that that you need, um, and and creates creates the theme, it puts like a, a starter menu in it, but it's basically you load it and everything is just text on a white, <laughs> it's, it's not yeah. style, it's removed all of the styles from, so it's, it's basically a blank slate that you can shape it and make it however, however you want, instead of starting with something that's has styles and then you have to un yeah override all kinds of stuff to get it to the way you want it to look. And the templates are the a PHP templates, so sort of in a classic sense rather than like a yeah so basically the, the wp content hook in the templates that just loads the blocks into that section yeah it's just a hybrid hybrid theme really i guess as it is now yeah okay cool well we are yeah five minutes from the end i think unless anyone has any burning questions you know, please, please raise your hand and please please go for it, but we could probably wrap up if not. Um, going once. Oh, Sean typed. Nice speed of typing. Does look like underscores is kind of not really maintained anymore. But looking at GitHub, it was last updated on the 1st of January, 2022 and doesn't talk about blocks or have any kind of basic for it. So I imagine that could be an issue of it not being a block theme. Yeah, and I think uh, the understrap uh, theme has a little bit more support for for blocks. So I think Evan is using it, the, the original version, but then I think Howard Development, they came in and they kind of added Bootstrap and some other things to it to kind of support blocks. I uh, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, I think Howard Development bought it recently. 
yeah i remember that being on being for sale and it was like languishing a bit and then they've actually done relatively good stuff with it, i think mm-hmm. yep there, there's a theme in the repository called powder p-o-w-d-e-r brian gardner's uh everybody loves this frost but powder is the basis for frost and it's just what he calls a stripped down bare bones uh block theme so anybody looking for i'm gonna try a replacement, a replacement for score underscores might look at that because uh the first time i posted it i, I went to his website his website is now charging for a, a powder studio so that's a different uh animal uh, <laughs> but he does have the bare bones still in the repository oh well, that's good for, yeah that'd be a good starting point yeah right well i think that's uh, a good time to wrap up um i hope it's been a good session for everyone um i hope we've we've helped answer some questions um, as I said, we are back in a couple of weeks and we do have a guest. That's a, just to um, say it again, we've got yeah, Jason Barl from WP GraphQL coming on uh, and giving us a bit of a talk, a bit of a demo, ask, answering questions around WP GraphQL and using it with ACF and use cases. Um, he's, he's a really good speaker. So if you have got time to come along, um, it would be good to see you there. And we'll be sending out an email about it to the email list. So if you're not already on the Advanced Custom Fields uh, email list, we have, where is it, on the footer, let me see. do actually have a an opt-in down at the bottom. So get your email on that, and we'll keep you updated about Chat Fridays. We'll get, keep you updated about the next session and obviously product releases and anything else ACF-related. Um, but, yeah, thanks for coming. See you next time. Have a lovely weekend. Thanks, Sam. Bye. Bye, Thank you.